The Internet of Things is a pretty broad concept overall. It's the name given to the interconnection of everyday devices from appliances in your home to automobiles with built-in sensors, all the way up to biochip transponders in farm animals and heart monitoring implants in humans. Essentially, it is the way that machines communicate with each other in order to improve automation and efficiency in daily tasks. Now, this might be a bit of a surprise to some of you, but the Internet of Things is not even close to a new concept though it didn't receive its name until 1999. The first internet appliance was actually a Coke machine at Carnegie Mellon University in the early 1980s. Of course, this was a pretty basic implementation of internet connectivity, but the programmers were able to remotely check if the machine was functioning and even check the stock of the machine from their PCs. As trivial as it was, this was the first real proof of concept for off-site monitoring of physical things. Now, though we have advanced by leaps and bounds since the 1980s, the Internet of Things is actually still pretty limited compared to what it could be, and at this point might even be seen as a gimmick to the uninformed individual. But it is growing in many areas. It is actually growing in too many areas to touch on all of them in this video. So today we're going to focus on how the Internet of Things is impacting automobiles and our homes. So cars now have sensors that measure performance indicators like tire pressure, fuel economy, and various engine levels like oil pressure and temperature. And some high-end cars can even receive firmware updates that add new or improved features. A great example of this is the Model S from Tesla Motors. Owners of this car recently received a firmware update that added features like traffic-based navigation and location-based smart air suspension. This is a fantastic advancement as it allows manufacturers to update and upgrade their products post launch rather than just adding the feature to the next year's model and expecting the consumer to buy that one when it's released. Companies that are trying to increase home automation are currently focused on optimizing security and comfort, installing internet accessible cameras, locking or unlocking your doors with a smartphone app, and adjusting your thermostat either before you get home or before you get out of bed are just three internet-based advancements available to homeowners today. So to the Carnegie Mellon University programmers in the 80s, this would have seemed like something out of a bad science fiction movie, but it's very real and is only the beginning of what the Internet of Things is capable of. I mean, even today, most internet and connected devices require human intervention to really change anything about them, but in the future, as more and more things are connected with each other, they can read off of themselves and each other instead of off of us. So the concern then is that if machines are going to become so intelligent and efficient that they take over most of our day-to-day -day tasks, then where do humans really fit in? Do we have a point anymore? And this is the main issue that some of the greatest minds of this age are starting to address with this growing implementation of automation. Earlier this year, Bill Gates warned the public that the demand for many jobs at the lower end of the skill set, which he did determined as drivers, waiters, nurses, and similar professions will be substantially lower in 20 years than they are today. And while it isn't directly related to automation of tasks, artificial intelligence is also a growing concern. Elon Musk, CEO of Tesla Motors and SpaceX, has recently been trying to increase awareness about the dangers of AI and automation, stating that bad superintelligences could become a massive threat to our way of life in as little as five years. So what can we say about the Internet of Things then, I guess? Well, it has the potential to increase ease and efficiency of our lives by a large margin in the coming years and could potentially save lives with instant reporting from devices that monitor our health. But with an increase in automation comes a legitimate threat to the jobs of the masses and a potential threat to our overall health and safety with advances in artificial intelligence. So let's just hope that we can maintain, you know, those intelligences as friends like Jarvis and keep, uh, you know, the whole Skynet situation from ever entering our reality. Speaking of intelligence, lynda.com. Lynda.com is your one-stop shop for learning a variety of skills online, which could help make sure you're not made obsolete by a machine in the next 20 years. Okay, I can't make any guarantees about the next 20 years, but let's focus on the next couple years at least. They have thousands of courses available with new ones added every week, and each one is taught by an industry expert. So whether you're currently in school and want to beef up on your studies, or you're working full-time and want to learn something new on your own schedule without a massive time commitment, lynda.com is an ideal service to expand your knowledge. So 
So head over to lynda.com slash techquickie and give their free trial a shot. They actually just increased the duration of their trial from seven to 10 days. So now is as good a time as any to try it out. If you learn a lot with the trial and want to continue, their plans are very reasonable. They started about 25 bucks a month. So that's lynda.com slash techquickie to give their service a shot. Thank you guys for watching. Like this video if you liked it. Leave a comment if you have suggestions for future fast as possible. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Peace out.